Customizing Forms, Headers and Footers. In this tutorial, we will discuss some advanced report customization features. You should already be comfortable with basic report customization. In the Modify Design tab of Custom Reports, the reports are divided into sections. Each section will have a header, a footer, and the detail. The first section in every report is the page header, which is data-driven and it starts off the report. There you may find the report title. When your report has multiple pages, the title appears on every page. You can only have one page header. Same goes for the footer. The footer will consist of the page numbers and the date, etc., and it will appear on every page. You can create as many other types of group headers and footers as you need on a report. The report header only appears once at the beginning of the report, and the footer will appear only once at the end of the report, usually used for grand totals at the end. The Details section is the lowest level within the report engine, and it contains the data rows that make up the report. Use Group Sections to represent the data in a logical format according to your needs. Create summary type reports and or create subtotals. To open a new report or group header and footer, right-click your mouse and insert. Change the name of your header and footer by clicking the header bar, view property list, and change the name. Let's create an example. We will create a report, sales order by customer, grouped by order date. Using the default report, Sales Order by Customer, we'll first make a copy of the report, then create a new report title. Again, every report will have a page header and footer, and appears on every page. To update the report title in the page header, highlight your title, click View Property List, and change the caption. The page footer is where the date and time and the page numbers usually exist. Let's create a date and page number. In the report footer, to create a date stamp, click on the field button. While the field button is pressed, move your mouse over into the design area, then release your button. You will see that your mouse pointer turns into a cross. Click and hold the left button and draw a box. In the Properties list, next to Data Field, type Equal, Date, and parentheses. Change the text to Report Date. To create a page number, again, drag and drop a field box in the page footer. In the Properties list, this time the Data Field is left blank. However, we will go down to Summary Function. This function explains what will be done with the data. For example, we will get the sum, or the average, or count each page. In this case, we'll select 2 for count. Next, Summary Running determines whether the value is running or continuous or not. Is it just for a particular group, or is it for the entire report? I choose 2 for all because I want the page number on each page of the report. Finally, Summary Type determines the type of summary to be used, such as Grand Total, Page Total, Subtotal, and Page Count. I'll use 4 for Page Count. Since I am creating Page Number of Total Pages, I will create another data field for the total pages. The summary function will this time be zero sum for the total pages. The summary running is zero because it is a non-continuous value. It's the end result. And the summary type is for page count. Remember to change the text to the number signs. Create labels stating pages and of and align all your fields to complete the look. The group header is where the headings or column titles in the report will go. 
This header has its own field. and the property list, we can rename the header and assign its data field to a group. We'll change the name to Header Customer and group this heading in the data field by customer. Entering a group in the data field is very important because it will help with your sorting that I will show you momentarily. Let's insert another header for our order date. Right click, insert, group header, footer, and a new header and footer will appear. No matter where you try to insert the header, it will always show up before the detail. Change the header name and data field to order date. Now we have two headers, header customer and header order date. Rename your footers to match the headers, so footer customer and footer order date. If you want the order of your header switched, for example your order date first, then the customer, do that by right clicking, press reorder groups, and drag and move the order of the two groups. So once your headers are grouped in the order that you want, it is important that your sort by is set up consistently like our group headers. Therefore, use the arrows to remove the fields dock number, line number, and item ship date, and organize the sort the same way, add in customer and order date, then any additional fields you want to sort by. This allows all orders to efficiently extract and organize the data for your report. Next, I'll add or delete the column titles that I want or don't want. Note that these titles are labels and you can design them as you like. I am going to cut the column headings from the header customer and paste it to the header order date. Enter the order date field. Don't forget, if you add or remove a label, add or remove the data field as well. In Footer Customer, we will create a subtotal for the group. You can either copy or paste the item price data field or drag and drop it. This time, we will change the summary properties in the property list for this field. First, summary function is the sum. Second, we are summarizing the detail in the group header customer. It is not a running value, nor is it summarizing all groups together, so we'll put none. The summary type is subtotal. Change the text to subtotal, add a label, and draw a line underneath. In the report footer, create a grand total by using the same data field, item price. Summary function is sum. We are totaling the entire report, so no summary group. Summary running is none, and the summary type is grand total. Other features are, you can use the net amount similarly to the way we subtotal the item price. The net amount shows the back orders times price per, whereas the item price shows the order amount times price per. I created a new header to show our repeat header function. None is when the header doesn't repeat. Or use this to place your headings on every page, every column, etc. Create a new page before or after each grouping. Collapse and heighten a column by using the can grow or can shrink. In this case, the can grow is set to false, so the data has to fit the predetermined size field even if the information doesn't fit. If the can grow is set to true, the height of the field will grow to fit the size of the data. We just did can grow for the data field. Now let's do a can shrink for the header. When can shrink is set to false, the height of the row is predetermined in modified design, and the data will appear as it has been set. When the can shrink is true, the height of the row will shrink to fit the size of the data. 
Column Count allows you to format multiple columns with your data. Column Direction formats how the data is read. Space your columns and height formats. Create a summary report and hide the details by highlighting Details, Property List, Visible, Change to False, and Tab. Keep Together and Group Keep Together determines whether a section should print in its entirety on the same page. When set at false, you see the section is split between two pages. When you keep all of the group together and set at true, the section prints on the same page without any page breaks. Another special feature is creating calculated fields. Select the field in the property list. At data field, an equation can be entered such as the quantity shipped times the item price. Then create your decimals in the output format. Now you can create your own specialty reports.